Good afternoon. On today's Angry Bulletin, for those of you who think that NASA is an affirmative action type of organization, well, the decision they've just made seems to go against that reputation because they just bumped two women, including an African-American woman, in order to send two white men up to the International Space Station. This is, of course, because of Starliner, and it's unknown as to when these women are going to get an opportunity opportunity to go to the space station next, and it's also created a great deal of disruption in a crew that trained together for months and now will not be working together at all. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Now, before I get everybody up in arms, I want to make it very clear, as you're about to discover here shortly, that NASA's decision was based on a very, very rational principle. It's not that I'm trying to make any sort of statement about affirmative action, aside from the fact that you're going to see that when NASA does make decisions, it's usually because they want to be as safe as possible and not because they're making any sort sorts of decisions to keep any particular political affiliation happy. Most of the time, that is. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about Starliner. So I'm not going to go through everything that went wrong with Starliner in particular. Suffice it to say that this spacecraft is not working any better than it did back in 2022. It was not safe to take human beings back to the Earth then, and it's not safe to try to carry out a re-entry now. NASA finally realized this after debating the issue for a couple of months, but now the consequences consequences of this decision are becoming very, very apparent because two young women, two qualified astronauts, have now been bounced from the Crew-9 mission and have been replaced by Butch and Suni, who didn't train with them, who were not prepared for all of their responsibilities on the International Space Station, although I am completely confident that they'll be able to carry out the mission in a pinch. NASA has, nevertheless, Nevertheless, gutted the Crew-9 team, and there's definitely going to be consequences that go with this decision. But why is all of this necessary? Well, it's because Starliner is not going to be able to take Butch and Suni back to Earth as it was supposed to, and NASA doesn't have the funds to send up a rescue Crew Dragon. So they are instead sending up the Crew Dragon that was supposed to go up with Crew-9, with only two crew members on board and two empty seats seats for Butch and Suni. But why did NASA remove the only two women on the mission? And more importantly, they also removed the mission commander, Zena Cardman. Well, it's because Cardman would have been the first rookie astronaut without test pilot experience to command a NASA spaceflight. She's a 36-year-old geobiologist. She's well regarded by her peers and definitely qualified to command the mission. However, no experience prior to this and that makes a big difference with the decisions as to who to send up on the crew 9 mission because had they sent up Zena Cardman and the one Russian that NASA is contractually obligated to send up and that is Alexander Gorbanov then this mission would have had no veterans on board and nobody with any test pilot experience and NASA regarded that as being an unnecessary risk. Even though NASA had a great deal of confidence in Dragon's self-flying capabilities, if anything went wrong during this mission, neither of these astronauts would have the flight training experience to handle the Crew Dragon in an emergency. At least that was the rationale. Gorbanov does have some flying experience on the L-39 aircraft during his time as a cosmonaut. He also had training in zero gravity conditions on board an Aleutian IL-76, but not nearly the flight experience that most Russian cosmonauts have. And so a combination of two rookie astronauts was just not safe enough as far as NASA was concerned, and I happen to agree with their assessment on this. However, at first, Joe Acaba, who became the chief of the astronaut office in February 2023, who had this decision to 
make, well, he stuck with Cardman because she was the original commander of the mission, but this prompted considerable dissent within the astronaut office. While Cardman is respected, and as we said before, Dragon should be able to handle everything fully autonomously, it was asking a lot of her to be the sole NASA representative on board the vehicle. And here's something else that was probably lurking in the back of everyone's minds over at NASA, or at least the people making this decision. Can you imagine how tragic it would be if a rescue mission for Butch and Sunni were to encounter some sort of tragic problem because they didn't put the right people on the mission, or that they just took a chance with people who didn't have quite enough qualification for the job at this particular time simply because because they didn't want to bump the commander. If anything had gone wrong with this mission, the consequences would have been far more significant than usual because this is not just an ordinary mission now, this is a rescue mission as well. And so the job falls to Nick Haig, the only experienced test pilot in the group to take over as the sole NASA representative and the one Russian representative who NASA is contractually obligated to take. No way around any of that, so I don't see where NASA had any other choice to make. But this is still very bad news for these two young ladies because they were trained together with this group. And if NASA makes the simple decision decision to just bump these two women to the Crew-10 mission, that's going to split up yet another team that's already been selected. Right now, you have Anne McLean, who's the commander of the mission, Nicole Ayers, who's the pilot, Takuya Orishi, who's a JAXA astronaut, and that is also a contractual obligation that is unlikely to be changed, and then Kirill Peskov, the one Roscosmos representative, who also is probably not going to get changed. So NASA is not just going to have to break up one crew in order to take care of this Starliner problem. They're going to have to break up two. Or if they choose not to break up the Crew 10 and instead push forward to Crew 11, Crew 12, we're looking at at least a year to possibly a year and a half in the future before these astronauts get an opportunity to go. And keep in mind, opportunities to go to the International Space Station are few and far between. If you get bumped to a future mission, who knows if you'll ever go again, aside from that one mission that you get to fly on. Your opportunities are so limited, and getting bumped from Crew 10 is definitely going to have a significant impact on the careers of these two young women in the future. And because of nothing that they were personally responsible for. It was instead because of the failure of a spacecraft that NASA knew had significant problems back in 2022. And if Boeing manages to get Starliner back without incident here in just a few days, I think some people at NASA are going to be scratching their heads as to whether or not all of this was really necessary. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I would like to thank new Patreon members Matthew Fuller and Seven from the West. Really appreciate you becoming a part of my Patreon family. Make sure that you join our Discord server and don't miss all the Patreon exclusive videos that I've been releasing lately. I'm going to go ahead and post the entire library here on Patreon shortly. And of course, if you're interested in joining this family, all the details are in the description. Thanks again for watching and as always, stay angry about space.